You're watching Coping with COVID-19 with Chris Manners. Today's special guest is Dr. Darpin Sakdev. Hi, I'm Chris Manners and you're watching Coping with COVID-19. Today my guest is Dr. Darpin Sakdev. She's an infectious disease specialist and leading the COVID case investigation and contact tracing team for the San Francisco Department of Public Health. She's here today to talk about the city's contact tracing program and how we're using it to slow the spread of the virus. Dr. Sakdev, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Can we begin by talking about when the city's contact tracing program began and what its purpose is? Sure. So we started case investigating and contact tracing on the first day that we had a case here in San Francisco. So that was March 5th of this year. The purpose of our program is to provide comprehensive services to people who are exposed to and diagnosed with COVID. Anyone who's newly diagnosed gets a phone call from our trained health professionals in which we talk more about their diagnosis, make sure that they have accurate information. We then go into understanding a little bit more about their symptoms and trying to better understand when they first may have become infectious to others. As part of that, we will then talk a little bit more about any places they may have visited for an extended period of time and people that they were in contact with. We then seek to better understand the individuals that they were in touch with by collecting names and phone numbers so that then we can reach out to those individuals and make sure that they have the information they need to, in order to quarantine and get access to immediate testing. How does the program actually work? How many people are currently acting as contact tracers and what exactly do they do? We have a team of nearly 100 people with the city who have been activated to provide comprehensive case investigation and contact tracing services for San Franciscan. So this team it ha is highly trained in being able to provide everyone diagnosed with COVID with information about what this means to them and make sure that they know the resources that are available to them so that they can safely isolate. Just to confirm, these tests are completely free, right? What kind of turnaround do we have? So fortunately, San Francisco offers free testing to all San Franciscans who have even one symptom consistent with COVID-19. What you need to know about this testing is that you have to schedule it online but that you don't need any medical insurance and you don't need a doctor's note. In addition, testing is available to all San Franciscans regardless of immigration status. You'll be able to get your test results in just one to five days after getting a test. And you'll get follow-up through the health department if you, fall, if you are found to have COVID-19, including access to all of our tracing activities that I've talked about today. So finally, what would you say to our residents is the best way to stay safe during this pandemic? Well, I like to boil it down to a short little phrase, um, cover your face, test early, and trace. And by that, I mean that as we're lifting our shelter-in-place restrictions, we really want people to continue into their new normal life wearing a mask. We know that this is a very protective way of preventing the spread of COVID. And we want everyone to adopt this practice in their, in, their, in their life as they move forward. And then finally, if somebody is diagnosed with COVID-19, we want to make sure that they have been paying attention to who they've been spending time with in the days prior to developing symptoms or the days prior to their tests. So that includes an element of tracing your footsteps. And, and just being mindful of your interactions, particularly any interactions where you may have not been masked or have been spending time with people over 10 minutes and less than six feet apart. That's really fantastic information, Dr. Sakdev. I really appreciate the time you've given us today. I know you're really busy. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope to continue the conversation. Thanks. Hi, I'm Chris Manners, and you're watching Coping with COVID-19. Here are some suggestions about how to deal with poor air quality from wildfires. They're pretty similar to how we're dealing with COVID-19, staying inside and wearing a mask. The best thing to do when the air quality is poor is to stay inside and have your windows and doors closed. Some modern heater units can clear the air indoors if they have a fan setting. 
Another alternative is to consider buying an air purifier if it's in your budget. They generally run around $150 and can clean the air in a mid-sized room fairly quickly. If you need to go outside, wear a mask and keep your outdoor activities as short as possible. If you're driving, avoid the outside smoke by running recirculated air in your car and keeping your windows up. Unfortunately, cloth and surgical masks don't protect you from wildfire smoke. And N95 masks, while effective, are still prioritized for essential workers. There are other options though. Some cloth masks have a pocket that fits a PM 2.5 air filter. Worn correctly, these filters can help protect you from fine particulate matter. Another option is to buy a KN95 mask. They're similar to N95s in that they filter at least 95% of airborne particles. And while they're not exactly the same, they provide effective protection from both the virus and from wildfire smoke. Either way, limit your exposure and avoid demanding outdoor activities. Check the filters in your heating unit and also your car's passenger compartment air filter. Replace them if they're clogged or overly dirty. Keep an eye on the Air Quality Index, or AQI. It's a system that tabulates air quality into color-coded brackets from 0 to 500. Checking local AQI values is a good way to know when it's safe to go outside. There are websites and apps you can check for data, and you could also sign up for air quality alerts. AirNow.gov is both a website and an app run by the EPA that includes interactive maps with current air quality readings in your zip code. Less official sources such as Purple Air, a website, and the Air Visual app also provide reliable data. Finally, try to avoid creating indoor pollution by not smoking inside or lighting candles and incense. Avoid using aerosol cans such as air fresheners because they add particulate matter to your environment. You could also try to avoid adding more outdoor air pollution, perhaps by cutting down on driving and other outside activities that produce dust and emissions like barbecuing and using indoor or outdoor fireplaces. Here's a quick recap. And that's it for this episode. You've been watching Coping with COVID-19. For SFGov TV, I'm Chris Manners. Thanks for watching. You're watching Coping with COVID-19 with Chris Manners. Today's special guest is Dr. Stephen Zlutnick. Hi, I'm Chris Manners, and you're watching Coping with COVID-19. Today, my guest is Dr. Stephen Zlutnick. He's the director of the Behavior Therapy Center of San Francisco and a professor emeritus of counseling psychology at the University of San Francisco. Dr. Zlutnick, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, it's been six months since we last talked, and while we know an awful lot more about how the virus works, it seems like we're back in exactly the same place. And now, pandemic fatigue seems to be affecting everybody. Could you talk a little bit about pandemic fatigue and what it is, and provide some advice for people so they know how to prepare for the long haul? Yeah. Well, uh, pandemic fatigue is a is a complex of of symptoms. You'll see most of us are experiencing at least one of these. But physical exhaustion, we just feel tired. Uh, changes in mood and uh, more worrying, which leads to an increase in anxiety. Uh, sense of this is never going to end. Hopelessness, so that lead, can lead to mild depression. Aches and pains, headaches, back pain, uh, decreased motivation. It's just kind of hard to get things done. Uh, a difficulty concentrate, similarly, it just can't seem to focus on anything. And a short fuse, uh, we're tending to get a little more irritable. So we, we, you can experience one or more of these things, and that's generally considered the pandemic fatigue. I think another level of pandemic fatigue, which we can talk about as well, is that we're letting our guard down. We're not being quite as diligent about following through on the things we're supposed to be doing. So finally, can we talk about this upcoming holiday season and how the pandemic is going to make it so much more difficult for everybody? Well, that's a big one. Look, the holidays are uh, a hugely important time for for most of us. 
uh, it, it, it just brings up everything around family. So on the one hand, that motivates us more to try to connect. Uh, but we need to remember that the virus is not very forgiving. The virus doesn't care how badly you want to see your family. So when you have guilt for not doing things for Thanksgiving. I think the flip side of that is not being guilty for exposing other people in the family to unnecessary health risks. And a lot of people are justifying more social connection with family on the basis of it's a big holiday. And again, all I can say is the virus doesn't care that it's a big holiday. And then I think that raises issues of, well, how are we going to do the holidays? And I think we do that by getting more creative. People are, are talking about virtual meals when possible. We'll all fix uh, a meal at the same time and eat it together online, or just some kind of a ritual together online, even if it's, let's meet for an hour with the family on Thanksgiving. Your earlier comment about assertiveness really makes sense in this context. If you're being pressured by a family member who says something like, oh, but we always get together with all the kids every holiday, and you're not comfortable with that, you need to figure out a way to be able to say no. Yeah, and look, one thing, last thing I'd like to say about that is somebody who teaches assertion all day long. I can tell you it's not easy. I, I have difficulties sometimes. It's a simple concept, but it takes some work. It, practicing assertion is helpful. Practice out loud to yourself when you're alone, what you will say to people who get too close to you or try to come in for a hug. You're going to have to be able to say, please, I'm sorry, I'd love to do that, or whatever your own words are. Well, thanks so much for coming back on the show, Dr. Zlotnick. I really appreciate the time you've given us today. Happy to be here. Thanks, Chris. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll be back with more pandemic-related information shortly. You've been watching Coping with COVID-19. For SFGov TV, I'm Chris Manners. Thanks for watching.